Hello, everybody. Welcome to Heather Shaw's Kidding. It's Heather Shaw right off the bat. If you like the show, please subscribe wherever you listen. Rate it. Leave a review. Apple Podcast, Spotify, MySpace Music Player, your butthole. Uh, rate, a com- rate. Leave a comment. Do what you want. Um, you can also join the Patreon, Heather Shaw Comedy, over there at patreon.com. You get an extra bonus episode every week. And uh, I upload a queefing video every Sunday night. You can find out if that's true or not. Upcoming tour dates, Indianapolis, St. Louis. I'll see you next week. You can get tickets at heathershawcomedy.com. And then later on in May and further, I'll be in Janesville, Wisconsin, San Diego, California, D.C., baby, home of Joe Biden, home of Trump, Um, Richmond, Virginia, Greenville, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, Beverly and Foxborough, Massachusetts, Tulsa, Oklahoma, because I can't get enough of crack and meth and white people and Bentonville, Arkansas um, for the blue big. The Big Diamond Comedy Festival, not the Blue Diamond Comedy Festival, which I always call it. Let's get into the podcast, shall we? Coachella, baby. Coachella's going on. I'm 36. I feel like uh, I it's illegal for me to even watch clips from Coachella. It's a festival. Um, I don't uh, I don't do festivals. I never did festivals. Sorry, I have a pube in my mouth. If you're looking at the camera, you can see that it's not a cat hair. It is a cat. Well, it could be a cat pube. Anyways, uh, I don't do festivals. I'm too old. Even when I was young, I felt like I was too old. Festivals, you know. Uh, it kind of feels like a scam if you're not getting the VIP treatment. You have to basically pretend you're homeless for a weekend. Pop a tent. Pop a molly. Get through the weekend. Watch some Lana Del Rey. I'd rather just stay home and watch it on YouTube. You know? Not a big festival girl. I like to pee in my own bathroom. I like a hot shower in the morning. Um, you know, I, I'm good. I'm good on the festival front. I never was a festival girly. Shout out to those who can stomach it. Um, the BO must be insane. But Coachella looks fun. It, you know, it, it looks uh, like a whitewashed fe- festival. It's very uh, glamorous from what I've seen. Seems fun. Uh, Lana Del Rey killed it. She was out there with uh, Billie Eilish, who's now gay. Billie Eilish released um, one of her songs, her upcoming songs from her album. I think it's called like Lunch or something. It's basically about how she wants to eat the shit out of, well, not eat the shit. She wants to eat a girl's vagina. She wants to eat her for lunch. She's gay. I love gay Billie. Who knows? She might be bi. I don't really care. Um, But yeah, I mean, looks like there's a lot of acts now that are women loving women. Or what what I used to call in my day uh, faggotry. Lesbians. Billie Eilish is getting a little woman-loving woman. Chapel Rowan is a lesbian. Jojo Siwa, for all the Disney adults out there, is you know, has got that gay niche covered. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo seems pretty straight, straight and narrow. She's giving uh, Taylor Swift vibes. You know, they can't all be gay, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends where you sit on that fence. Um, bi people just sit on top of the fence and look at both sides and go, I don't know. They both seem awful and they're not wrong. Lana, who is, you know, straight vibes, but still a goddess, a gay icon, a legend. I don't care if Lana votes Republican every fucking election. She is my queen. I wouldn't ever hold that against anybody anyways, but Lana could eat babies for breakfast. Uh, Lana could fart on the homeless. She could avoid paying taxes. She could support genocide. I love Lana's music and I stand bes- behind her in a non-gay way because she is a straight Republican. Uh, she has given us so much good music. She could do anything. I would let Lana kill my entire family, Manson style. Hello, have you heard her music? It's fine. Do what you want, Lana. Plus her, her name backwards is anal. That's fun. Um, Grimes did a set. She fucked it up. You know, she was not prepared. You don't say. Uh, Grimes had a couple good songs when she first started, when she was cosplaying as a poor artist. And now she's just showing up to Coachella sets as, you know, she's a DJ. All she has to do is press play and she can't manage to get that right at a, on a Coachella stage. 
the largest audience she'll probably have. Um, I don't think anybody in her household listens to her. Elon certainly doesn't listen to her. He thinks she's the help. What's your name, darling? Grimes? Ooh. He, uh, the, th- the three alien kids she has, they're not listening to her. They think she's the help. What are you, my nanny? My name's Exelier. Um, But she got up there on stage. She had to press some buttons, and it got fucked up. I think her set was on like two times speed and it, it synced weird. I don't know a lot about DJing and I'm proud of that fact. I think that's one of one of the most um, attractive things about me is that I don't know anything about DJing. That's the most, if you don't know anything about DJing, you are a very attractive person. If you get behind a digital turntable, any turntable and you go, I don't know how this works. I want to suck your butt. Um, Anybody that knows the ins and outs of a of a DJ turntable board, I don't even know what it's called. I'm glad to sound ignorant about this. Um, I'm scared of them. I don't want my drink around them. Man, woman, non-binary, I don't care. You're creepy. Um, except Trix, Trixie Mattel gets a pass. But Grimes got up there. She had to press some buttons. Didn't work out too well. She had to stop and be like, guys, I can't fix this. She's essentially Drew Barrymore in a, in, like, evil Drew Barrymore. She's like, you know, uh, she married the evil billionaire. She is the villain. But she was up there like, guys, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. But I literally, like, I have this DJ board and the buttons aren't working right. I'm so sorry. I can't even fix it up here. Like, it is my fault. She did kind of take accountability. It is my fault, but also, like, the guys were supposed to set this up for me. I was busy uh, making butter toast. And so while I do accept some accountability, this is not my fault completely. And I don't know how to fix it. We're just going to have to ride this out. Meanwhile, everybody's on Molly, uh, you know, and just like, when is, when's Tyler the creator come out? Embarrassing for Grimes. It's not like she had to get up there and her guitar was out of tune. You know, um, it literally, it was, it was a set where she stood behind a computer and pressed play. God, she's got it good. I hope her kids turn out real fucked up. Not in a bad way, not in like a a drug addict way, but just in like a, they annoy the fuck out of her forever way. Um, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Grimes. You can't be a fan of Grimes. I mean... Her f- her first couple songs were great, fine. But like, you know, I'm sure Hitler made good art. I'm sure a fir- his first pieces were kind of nice. I'm not I'm not saying Grimes is Hitler. I'm saying that she's she's married an evil tech billionaire who tanked an app and she decided to to name her kids awful horrible names. X Z X I R and Pythagoras Pythagorean Rand theory. I don't even know. I'm too dumb to even make this joke. And her name is Grimes. What's her real name, do we think? I'm going to Google it because I have access to that and I don't want to sound dumb, but let's see. What do we think Grimes' real name is? If you know the answer, don't shout it out. Don't cheat. I'm going to say, let's see. Lana's real name is Lizzie, Elizabeth. Lana has the most Republican name ever. I think her name is Elizabeth Grant Woldridge. I mean, she sounds like she votes against my rights every time. But she makes good music. I'll, I'll let it pass. Um, that's the worst thing a female artist does is probably support, you know, uh, uh, the ban on gay marriage. Male musicians, you know, they'll pee on women and sex traffic them. So what's worse? All right, Grimes' real name. I'm going to say it's not Elizabeth. I'm going to say it's like... No, it's K. Starts with a K, probably like a Kaylee or like Mary, Catherine, something real white. Here we go. What is Grimes' real name? Oh, good. That's that's like the first. Claire. Claire Elise Boucher. Doucher. Claire. That is so, I, I knew that. I did know that. I forgot about it, but. She's a Claire. That is such a Claire thing to do. Guys, I, my buttons are all fudged. Claire. Come on, Claire. Oh, my God. 
I don't know why she's still famous. I'm not really sure. I don't know if she releases any good music anymore. Again, she had a few good songs. Olivia Rodrigo, I, you know, straight Olivia. I don't even care what her sexual orientation is because in my mind, she's 12. I mean, she's way too young for me to even give a fuck about. I can, I can speculate on Taylor Swift because we're in our 30s, both of us. But Olivia Rodrigo is like, I think she's like 20. Like, I'm not, I don't give a fuck. She came out with Gwen Stefani, which was fucking awesome. During her set, she's a big Gwen Stefani fan. I think No Doubt's an amazing band. I love Gwen Stefani. Gwen Stefani came out and sang, I think they did um, some bathtub maybe. They sang that song. Uh, and, and, and I was watching the clips of Gwen Stefani and I was like, man, Gwen Stefani's so fucking cool. Man, she's awesome. She's the lead singer of No Doubt. And then I stop and I remember that Gwen Stefani married Blake Shelton. And then I'm like, oh. Gwen Stefani fucking sucks. <laughs> like, you are who you date. You are especially who you marry. Um, I don't believe that there's, like, one cool person in the marriage that's married to a nightmare. I think you kind of, you are that, you are who you marry. Why did she marry Blake Shelton? That guy's not, he's not evil. He's just, like, a dumb country singing, you know, misogynistic, you know, guy. Certainly, she went from the the lead singer of Bush, I forget his name, to Blake Shelton, and she just lost all of her cool points. So now when I see her, I'm like, for a split second, I'm like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, Gwen, you do your little, and then I'm like, oh, she's, you know, it's like, it's like if the cool, artsy uh, weirdo in high school was dating, like, the football quarterback who, like, hate-crimed the theater kids. You're like, oh... You're actually not cool. This is all just a front. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's, it's uh, you know, you are who you marry, man. You can't get away from it. Will Smith was there. Uh, he came out, I wish, of the closet, but no, he just came out on stage. He's, he's, he's doing his soft launch of him again. He's like, hey, remember me? The guy banned from the Oscars? The A-list celebrity banned from the Oscars? That's kind of badass. He's soft launching himself out there at Coachella. Which, you know, get it, Grandpa. Tyler, the creator, was there. Um, he had a, He's so fun to watch. I watched some of his stuff. You know, he was just coming off of that weird appearance he made on Gerard, Gerard Carmichael's HBO documentary, which is like, I can't even, it's like quiet on set. I can't watch it. I can't stomach it. I can handle a lot of cringe. Um, but I, there's just certain things that I'm like, I don't, I can't watch this. It's like, um, I can't watch a woman giving birth. Uh, I like vaginas too much to do that to myself. And I don't like babies enough to do that to myself. Um, I can't watch Gerard Carmichael's. It's it seems so self indulgent, narcissistic. It's like who the f- it's like Rebel Wilson's memoir. Who the fuck asked for this? Gerard is a is a very great and successful comedian writer, um, uh, and this documentary is going to take him back. It's going to take all of his accomplishments away. The cover on HBO of the documentary alone or the docu-series, I don't know what. It's him in underwear with like cameras just pointed at him and like a boom mic guy. I'm just like, get me the fuck away from this. Whatever this is, I don't care. Can you imagine Can you imagine making a, a docu-series about yourself? This is the mindset of, of performers have. Some of these performers out there think they're so important. I mean, even if this was pitched to him he still had to agree to do it and then beyond that he apparently confessed his love to Tyler the creator who's like not a man you want to be vulnerable with because he'll just literally just fart you'll be like oh my god I'm thinking about harming myself and he'll just be like (laughs) sick um he confessed his love to Tyler the creator and then Tyler was like no thanks I'm good Tyler's a really beautiful girlfriend. And he didn't think that was enough, so he brought Tyler, the creator, back in front of cameras for his docuseries because I guess he thought it'd be good content, and it was, but at what cost? Now I have to, like, always associate Gerard Carmichael with, like, insane, narcissistic cringe. It's crazy. 
Uh, if you don't know, go look up the clip on on TikTok of Gerard and, and Tyler on this docu series. Gerard's like, we got to talk about this. First of all, if you have a crush on somebody and they've given you the satisfaction of saying, "I'm not into you," that's it. You don't. You're not deserved a conversation about it after that. That's all in on you. That's on you to work through in your head. That person that you have a crush on doesn't owe you shit. Um, so it was kind of nice of Tyler to even humor him. Cause if, if somebody came to me and said, I have a crush on you never happened. Uh, they usually just say, I've always wanted to fuck Jim Carrey. If you're watching, here's a face. Um, if somebody came to me and said, I have a crush on you and I wasn't into them. And I said, Oh, you know, I, let's be friends. And then, and then they were like, Ugh. And then set up, you know, a tripod and, and we're like, can we talk about this again? I am not resolved with my feelings. It's like, fuck you. What is this for? I don't owe you shit. Figure it out. Go to therapy. Get a new crush. Leave me alone. I am not here to do the emotional labor of your crush. But Tyler, Tyler at least kind of heard him out. And by that, I mean slurped tacos in his face and farted, literally farted. Go watch the clip. It's great. I love Tyler, the creator. And now I don't really fuck with Gerard because of that document, docu-series, whatever it's called. Um, who else was there? Kesha was there. She came out on some, I, I don't know. She was there. She changed the lyrics to her song, her TikTok song. Which, what, a, what a visionary. She knew about that app decades before it came out. Uh, you know, her infamous, her famous song, Wake Up in the Morning Feeling Like P. Diddy. She changed the lyrics. I'm going to sneeze. This is going to be a mouth shit. <coughs> God bless America. Uh, she came out. She had to change those lyrics. Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. She came out. She changed them to uh, wake up in the morning feeling like literally anybody else. So that was fun. She's still relevant. I like Kesha. I always love Kesha. She had some drama with a, a producer who was kind of creepy. And she came out about, I think his name is Dr. Luke. I think he works with Katy Perry and, you know, all great people, I'm sure. Um, Katy Perry came out recently and said that she thinks Jelly Roll would be a good replacement for her on American Idol. And I'm like, I agree. And also, I think a literal Jelly Roll would be a better replacement for you, Katy Perry. Katy Perry giving people critiques on their singing. It's like, what are we doing? It's like Helen Keller judging an art gallery. That's not fair. She had that song, though, that I still love. You're so gay and you don't even like boys. Oh, my God. 2006 Katy Perry, man. She was a shit. There was a lot of footage of uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey out there. Uh, faded as fuck. You know, enjoying Coachella, as they should. Fucking whatever. Drunk, faded. You know, on uh, on... I don't know what drugs Taylor Swift would take. Probably like three ibuprofen. That's her getting wild. I feel like she just has vodka waters and, and some Advil and gets fucked up. Maybe she smokes weed. I don't know. I could see her going both ways. Sexually and with weed. Um, she was there with Travis Kelsey. They looked like they were having fun. I mean, I don't I don't blame them. Travis Kelsey's 34 years old. I'm, th I'm two years older than Travis Kelsey. Dude, I would be so fucking tired. I mean, even Taylor Swift is in her 30s. Dude, you couldn't pay me to be out past 10 p.m. Well, you could. It'll cost you at least $10. But I don't think I, I mean, I, I would be so tired. I don't drink anymore. You know, I'd have to just, I don't know, drink, drink yerba mate like a real pussy. Oh, I'd be so bored. But good for them. They look, they look like they were having fun. You know, they get the VIP treatment. Of course, it's way more fun for them. But, uh. You know, it's nice. I can't tell anymore. I think their relationship is real now, but who knows? I mean, they're at a very public festival. You know, it's hard to tell. I want to believe that they're they're a real couple, but it's like everywhere they're snapped, it's like these very public events and they're, you know, canoodling like uh, how you'd imagine they would. But uh, I don't know. I still, I still, the jury's still out with me on that one. I, I think they're a couple. I'm just going to pretend they're a couple. It's just easier for me because I don't care that much. And they do like kiss each other. So that's good enough for me. You know, Travis is actually going to be hosting a new, uh, 
He's going to be hosting a new talk show. Uh, uh, not a talk show. That'd be insane. The Kelsey, <laughs> the Kelsey cast. He's going to be hosting a, um, a TV uh, game show called Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? And I'm going to stop you right there and tell you, yes, you are. If you're out there and you know how to pump gas, guess what? You win. Did you have to file your own taxes this year? You win. Do you know how to set your alarm on your phone multiple times so you don't snooze through just one alarm? Guess what? You win. Uh, most people are smarter than celebrities. Celebrities are smart in, in one niche way, but uh, they're real dumb. I've heard a lot of people say that they've, when they're around, like Julia Fox said it, when she was around, she would say like she was around huge, huge A-list stars and they were the most boring people on the earth. Like she was, you know, grasping for, for conversation. They're vapid and they're just, you know, boring. And you can see that if they live in a bubble, especially like a Kardashian, they're probably very business savvy. Um, but, you know, if it just comes down to talking about Palestine and Israel, it's like, you know, they don't know what the fuck. You're, they think that's a, a brand. Um, but I can't imagine the show is going to be good. Are you smarter than a celebrity? And I like that Travis Kelsey is hosting it instead of partaking in it. You know, they're like, buddy, you've got CTE. Why don't you sit out the questions about the alphabet? Why don't you just host this one? You just read the, the words off the card. You can do that, right? His, his brain's a ticking time bomb. He's a, he's a professional football player. He's been in the league for years. Um, you know, God help him and his brain. And that also, I've seen that man try to spell squirrel, the word squirrel on Twitter. Granted, he was in college, but by college, you should know how to spell that bad boy. He was struggling with that one. I've seen him tweet. I know I'm smarter than Travis Kelsey. His head is full of rocks. F rocks like, you know, diamonds, money, and literal rocks. Not much going on up there, I'm sure. He seems like a nice guy, but, man, are you smarter than a celebrity? I'm glad he's hosting it. He'll be a great host. He can read. I just wonder what celebrities are going to get. Because you got to think, celebrities that are willing to be on a game show hosted by a football player who's maybe banging Taylor Swift, there's a lot to unpack there. But any celebrity that goes on there has to risk the chance of looking like a complete fucking idiot, you know, for not knowing the capital of New York, Albany. You know, not knowing what H2O stands for. Um, I, I, I wonder what's... I mean, maybe they'll get, like, smart celebrities so it's not too embarrassing, like Bill Nye. He would be on there. He needs some airtime. Um, so, somebody on TikTok said they may get uh, one of the forgotten Baldwin relatives. I could see that. Maybe an old Arquette. Throw up a Patricia Arquette. She seems very smart, though. She probably would say no. Uh, you know who I want on that fucking show. You know who I'm going to say. Get that fire. I want Gypsy on that motherfucking show. We're going to talk about her later. Don't worry. Somebody said I should rename this podcast the Gypsy Recap, and I don't disagree. I want to see Gypsy on there, but I feel like it's going to be like random people like Kevin from The Office. You know, uh, Rob Kardashian, if any, but if any Kardashian, it'll be Rob. Uh, you know, maybe a Caitlyn Jenner would make an appearance. It's these kind of celebrities. It's people that, you know, and who are they going to play? I feel like the celebrities have to kind of win. Um, the only way celebrities are winning on that game show is if celebrities are, are going up against like, you know, people from Alabama or like the entire Special Olympics team. These are the people that would be, you know, that would a celebrity would beat. But beyond that, I don't know who's going to be on the show. Um, I think it, it lasts one round. You know, celebrities just get murdered, killed, beat. And then Travis Kelsey rides off in the sunset with his millions. Even then, though, I think I think a Special Olympics team might beat the celebrities, to be honest. I think they might. You know, if it comes down to, like, trivia about cartoon characters, they might win. Uh, we had some deaths this week. Some sad deaths. Um, we got to talk about it. Well, we know OJ died. Um, no one really, you know, it's been years. We all, we all know he did it. He even wrote a book being like, here, if I did it, 
If I did it, here's how I would do it if I did it, but I didn't do it, but maybe I did. Who knows? Double Jeopardy can't get me. He died. He's gone. Cancer got him. A lot of people were saying, I mean, I saw so many of the same jokes online. It started to just become like an open mic of hack jokes. Gone too late. The OJ has expired. He can, you know, now rest easy knowing the killer has died. I don't know. It, it, all the hack jokes about OJ. There's nothing left to say about him. Rest in poop, sir. Uh, he definitely did it. And now I'm seeing, I made a video about it and I saw comments saying, you know, there's a theory, a really good theory that his son did it. It's like, can we stop? Can we stop? Can we just accept reality? Why do? We, why is there always like this? The only time you can speculate and it's like okay and open to speculate is John Benet's murder. That's it. Because there's so many loose ends. There's nothing is tied up. Nothing's for sure. Speculate all you want. We're never going to find out who killed that child. Speculate. But when it comes to like OJ, OJ fucking did it. These are the same people that are like, no, Scott Peterson is, is innocent. It's like, get a grip. Get some, where is your logic? Where is your rationing? Rational. Rationing? Fuck off. I don't know what I'm saying. It's late here, Tuesday night. I've had no Lucy Brown coffee today. I'm I'm upset. I hate speculation over crimes that are so fucking obvious. There are still people out there that probably believe Casey Anthony didn't do it. Well, she was found innocent. So, so what? Holy shit. She was tried in Florida. That entire state is made of people that are not that should be on the celebrity side of are you smarter than a celebrity? They're all idiots. They show up to court in sandals, flip-flops, floral patterns. They go, she's pretty. She couldn't have done it. Certain cases, it's like we don't need to speculate. OJ did it, dude. You know, he got off on a nursery rhyme. His lawyer said, I got a good rap. I got a good rhyme. And it worked. If the glove don't fit, you must equit. If the juice is sick, you must obit. Uh, Casey Anthony got off. I don't, uh, well, cause it, uh, like I said, Floridians had to hear that the, the jury was made of Floridians. That's how she got off. It was made of sun damaged brain dead people. And they had to find people for that jury that weren't aware of the case. If you weren't aware of the Casey Anthony case by the time it went to trial and you were a Floridian, you should be legally locked up. You are not fit to live by yourself. I don't know how they found these jury members. Scott Peterson did it. Who the, Okay, you have a pregnant woman and a cheating husband and, a, and the cheating husband has a boat and the pregnant woman goes missing, is found dead in the water. What are we doing? How is anybody going, well, well I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Scott Peterson did it. Are we, are we okay? I hate the speculation on obvious crimes. It's so weird. Go, go. Go speculate what happened to Amelia Earhart. Go talk about John Benet Ramsey. Uh, th- these are obvious cases, though. The OJ, I mean, they're all obvious. It's so annoying. I I think people just want to just look for other other possibilities because it's more fun that way than to just accept the cold hard hard truth of like, yeah, OJ fucking did it. Always look for motive. Use logic. What are we doing? A TikToker that I was a mutual with also passed away, and it is very sad. She was my age, 36 years young. Um, I, her name was Kyle Marissa Roth. Uh, if you're on TikTok, you may have seen her. I can't imagine that you haven't if you're on TikTok. She was a, a great creator, uh, very engaging. She read blind items, um, celebrity blind items, which are essentially, you know, hearsay, fun hearsay. You know, it's like this A-list quasi singer with a big ass, you know, refuses to look people in the eye. And it's like, J-Lo? I don't, could it, it could be J-Lo, right? And then it's like, it reveals in a year. Yeah, it was J-Lo. It's like, okay, great. But Kyle Marissa Roth, she would uh, read blind items and give her own commentary. It was a very entertaining account. She had a huge, huge following and uh, she flew a little too close to the J-Lo sun. And, uh, she claims, she claimed, she's passed on now, but she claimed that her account was removed by JLo or JLo's team. 
I mean, you know, and that cost her a lot of money. She monetized on TikTok and whatnot. Um, and, and she passed away. The, the, uh, cause of the death is not known. I believe it's health issues. She had a lot of health issues. She, she was a colon cancer survivor who was in remission and she couldn't afford the colonoscopy that she needed. Um, and she passed away. It's very sad. I just want to say RIP to her. Um, really enjoyed her content. Uh, she made blind items fun because, you know, people, anybody can get on TikTok and read blind items verbatim and it's just boring and stale. There's another creator who does it and she's fine, but she literally just reads them. There's no commentary. There's no, here's what I think. Or, you know, um, people have reached out to me and said this, it was, you know, she, Kyle made it fun. Um, and she did have some health issues. She had a hard life apparently. Um, and I'm so sorry if you don't know anything about this creator, uh, but I'm going to, you know, I'm talking about her. So if this bores you to death, uh, lighten up, get a heart, you cold, heartless bitch. I love you. Um, she did have a hard life. I believe that she was married and, uh, had a, had a husband and had a miscarriage. So she lost the baby and her husband died. I mean, she had a really rough life, but she really, uh, she really touched a lot of people. She made, she brought a lot of joy to people. She will be greatly missed. Um, there are conspiracy theory wackos on TikTok that, again, use logic. Use logic when you're looking at things. Please, dear God. Everyone is saying, oh, she flew, she had, people had it out for her. She, she was letting too much information go. They had to take her out, meaning the industry, somebody in the industry, the Illuminati. She was, she was revealing too much information. She was literally sitting and reading public blind items and giving her own commentary. Okay. She wasn't out here, you know, releasing the Epstein list. She, you know, she wasn't doing anything crazy, uh, scandalous. She was reading blind items and making them fun. It was a fun comedy and it's entertainment pop culture account. And she had health issues. She stated it herself. She she was she was behind on her colonoscopies. Uh, she's she you know she had health issues. Use your fucking logic. I think that's what happened. It's not my place to even say you know we don't need to know what happened. We know that she passed away. Her family released a statement saying she passed away, and that's where we should let it rest. But it's like when people just get crazy on TikTok with the conspiracies, it's like the Baltimore Bridge went down, and everyone's like, was this Osama bin Laden coming back from the dead to do it again? It's like, can we just chill the fuck out? We're in America. Our infrastructure is crumbling around us. We send all of our money to war, to fund war. We don't send money to Flint, Michigan, or to repair bridges, or to even do maintenance on bridges. Bridges will collapse. I saw that the, there's another uh, TV show rewatch podcast coming out and and i and I, we've ha, have we had enough of this already guys do you know what uh, tv show recap podcasts i mean it's every celebrity and their mother has a podcast and that's fine because some celebrities are very entertaining and fun to listen to and others are dax shepherd um but i i kind of draw the line in the sand with podcasts when it comes to cast members getting together and just talking about every episode ever of the TV show they were on. Who was asking for this? It started, I remember, with The Office ladies, uh, Jenna Fisher and, I don't know, Djibouti Nanunu. I don't know her name. <laughs> Djibouti Nanunu and Jenna Fisher. The lady who played Angela. I'm blanking. She's fine. She's great. Uh, but they came out with a podcast breaking down every episode, starting with episode one to the finale of The Office. We're oversaturated with The Office. We all know about The Office. I fucking love The Office. I think that's top five show of uh, all time for me, personally. Uh, but I don't need to listen to a podcast about it. The Sopranos did it. Michael Imperioli and uh, Jujudu Benunu, some other actor, I don't remember his name. They did episode by episode breakdowns of The Sopranos, which is interesting. I would think more interesting because it's like, I don't know, The Sopranos can do no wrong in my, in my head. So like they get a pass, but like the cast of it's always sunny has a podcast where I don't know if they're breaking down episodes or if they're just talking about behind the scenes, but it's like, what is this for? Is this just a cash grab? 
Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm does one now. Cheryl Hines and uh, Jajudu Badudu. I don't know his name. Jeff Garland. I think it's Cheryl Hines and Jeff Garland. They just finished their series finale. Their series finale just aired, and they've already released a podcast where they're going episode by episode talking about the episode. I mean, can we just can we just enjoy the show? Do we need to know what was catered during craft services that day? I don't care. I'm not listening. So, you know, I think that's, you know, let people enjoy what they want, Heather, and just don't tune in. But, you know, I feel like complaining about this. The latest one, (sighs) this is so unnecessary. Do you remember the show, This Is Us? Okay, it's a fine show. It was Mandy Moore, Milo Vatimidigalia. I don't know how to say his last name. Milo Vatimidigalia. Um... The big lady. I don't remember her name. Listen, I can't even name anybody else in the cast. It was a very dramatic show. I think on like NBC. Now it was good, but it was very dramatic. And not in like a, this is dark and this is like hard, sensitive subject. It was just drama. And every episode had at least three separate 10 minute long monologues by a lead character. I mean, I didn't make it through one season. I tried. I really did. Because I love a good drama. You know, but I mean, it it is sappy. It is heavy in a way that you don't, it doesn't feel like you're smart for watching it. You just feel like you're kind of watching a soap opera. Very heavy on monologues. Every fucking episode of the show, there was a heavy, at least three minute long monologue by a character. Um, you know, slow zoom into their face while the music plays in the background. It's just too over the top for me. Now there's a podcast with that cast. I can't even tell you who's in that cast. Certainly not Mandy Moore and Milo Vendemilinga are not on the podcast. It's just the other actors that were like, you know what we should do? Let's do a podcast talking about the show. I, I can't imagine who's listening to that. This is us. I don't know how long they've been on the air. I don't think they're on the air anymore. I just can't imagine... Why anyone, you know what I would listen to? Seinfeld. I'd really think that's that's so interesting. Now, maybe this is just me. You know, this is subjective. Art is subjective. Podcasts are subjective. You're listening to this. Are you okay? But I just can't imagine there's anyone out there that has the plethora of options for podcasts and is going, you know what I want to hear today? I want to hear the cast of no-name actors who are on This Is Us break down every scene of that sappy-ass drama. It's crazy. I mean, you know what? They need they need better podcasts. Where's Gypsy's podcast? I hope you're not sick of me talking about her. I don't give a fuck. I love talking about Gypsy and her new nose and her no husband. Enough with the podcast. My my podcast is the last podcast that needs to be out. And I'm late, you know. I feel pregnant. All right, let's get into some ad reads here. This will be a longer episode, by the way. I know last last week I said, "Oh, this is a long episode," and it wasn't. It was like under an hour. This might this might break an hour, guys. Buckle in. I hope you're enjoying it so far. If you want an extra episode, by the way, Patreon, baby. Or just support me, I don't care. Or support our sponsors of the show, our lovely, lovely sponsors, starting with Lucy Brown Coffee, baby. You can enjoy coffee from Lucy Brown Coffee Bar without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Just like me watching Coachella while I'm on the toilet, you too can order coffee. Watch Coachella, order coffee, be happy. All while sitting on your toilet dropping a deuce, baby. I love ordering coffee while I'm dropping a deuce. There's nothing better. The coffee goes in, the deuce comes out, I'm hitting order. Lucy Brown Coffee Bar is now offering subscriptions, coffee subscriptions only. No other subscriptions currently. I've I've asked the owner, Sarah, Sarah, that's her full name, Sarah, Sarah. I said, Sarah, Sarah, other than coffee subscriptions, can you also offer a subscription for Highlights Magazine? And she said, please leave. And I said, thank you, Sarah, Sarah. Simply fill out the form on their website and get coffee beans from different and exciting roasters every month sent straight to your door, and that's starting at just $20 a month. That's nothing. Come on. Didn't you get a tax refund? No. Did anybody get a tax refund? I don't think anybody got a tax refund this year. We got a lot of 
wars to fight. This is getting off, 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 the, off the script here, Heather. Focus. Back to coffee. Get off of Gaza. Visit LucyBrownCoffee.com. That's L-U-S-S-I BrownCoffee.com. And follow the coffee subscription button to get signed up today. And if you use the code Heather Shaw is kidding, that's the name of this podcast, huh? Use that code, you'll get 10% off your order. That's a good deal. I have this coffee subscription, I swear to God. Um, I got the coffee this month. It is fucking fantastic. Every month it's different. Uh, no repeats, baby. Every month it's different. I love it. But it is the flavor, the style that you're you going for. You fill out the form and you say, I like dark roast. I like blondes. I like brunettes. I like redheads. Uh, whatever you like, that's the coffee they send you. They curate it for your taste. And boy, oh boy, do they nail it. Every, every month I'm so happy with the coffee I get. I've never had cleaner poops. Thank you, Lucy Brown. I love you so much. The other autism podcast, baby. It is here. It is queer. It is into Funko Pops. When am I going to let that joke go? Have you ever wondered if you might be autistic? Or maybe you were recently diagnosed and now you're trying to understand autism and your place in the autistic community. What if this was an ad for TikTok? Then get on TikTok. There's a lot of autistic people out there. A lot of people claiming to be autistic just because they sleep in the fetal position. You seen that on TikTok? There's this like trend where like, they're like, if you, if you sleep in the fetal position, you're fucking neurodivergent, bitch. I'm like, I just, I'm just comfortable. I like sleeping how I did when I was in my mom's womb. Leave me alone. The Other Autism Podcast is here to help you. Each episode, your host, Kristen, the lovely, beautiful, smashing, gorgeous Kristen, brings you interviews with autistic folks who were diagnosed as adults. You'll hear what it was like for them going undiagnosed most of their lives and then how they came to terms with their autistic identities later on. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, For the big, big brains out there, the Other Autism Podcast also covers the latest in autism research and topics at the forefront of autistic culture and scholarship. This is real interesting stuff, and if you're autistic, I would think this is right up your alley, baby. If you are autistic or wondering, hey, am I autistic? I sleep in the fetal position. Well, the Other Autism Podcast helps you feel more informed and less alone. You can find the Other Autism Podcast wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, MySpace Music Player, uh, Pandora, um... I think that's it. Where else? You, uh, iTunes? No, that's that's dead. Is iTunes around? I don't know where else you're getting oh, uh, podcasts. YouTube? Check it out on YouTube. I hope there's a YouTube channel for it. Thank you, the other autism podcast. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, and thank you, Lucy Brown. Jojo Siwa. One second. I'm gonna go get my water. Watch. If you're watching the video, I don't edit because that, uh, I'm gay. This is purely water, I swear. I didn't just get this off the floor, and it isn't just full of vodka. I'm sober. Is Gypsy Rose sober? Nah, she can't be sober. I hope Gypsy Rose is getting the most, the best weed she can find. Get that fire weed! We'll get to her in a second. I just wanted to do a quick aside on JoJo. JoJo, <laughs> she released that Karma's a Bitch song. Um... I don't even remember how it goes. I'm kind of glad I forgot. Um, She released the Karma's a Bitch song. It's charting at 80 on the uh, pop charts or whatever. So she, she, remember she made that whole like stink about how she was like going to invent gay pop. I said, I want to write a song, gay pop. (coughs) I can't even do it. My God. How does she live? How does she live? She said she uh, wrote this song. Karma's a bitch, you know, gay pop, blah, blah, blah. Release a song, Every the internet proceeded to laugh, which, you know, she's a 20-year-old kid, I kind of feel bad. But she's very public, and, you know, she gets that. Well, lo and behold, a lady called Brit Smith came out and re-released her song, Karma's a Bitch, that she wrote in 2012. She wrote and released this song in 2012, and wouldn't you know it, it's the same song as JoJo Siwa's. Clearly, this is not a surprise. Again, use logic. JoJo definitely bought that song. Now, I don't know how it's legal for Brit Smith. And now, by the way, Brit Smith's 
Karma's a Bitch is charting so much higher than JoJo's. So JoJo's marketing team did this full push behind the song. And then out of nowhere, this lady who retired from being a musician, stopped being a musician, (laughs) mouth fart, who released this Karma's a Bitch song in 2012, re-releases it, her version, and kind of takes the piss out of everything that JoJo Siwa has been saying to promote this song, that she wanted to invent a new song, new new, new, gay pump, Karma's a Bitch. It was somebody else's song from 12 years ago. Holy shit. And not only that, the woman's song is charting so much higher. I think it's at like uh, number three on the pop charts, but I don't really know what that means. It's just higher than JoJo's currently by like double. So it's just poor JoJo, man. She can't catch a break. Don't lie about it, though. She should have been like, yeah, I, I, I found this... The song sounds like it's from 2010. Everything checks out about this. The aesthetic, everything JoJo's doing with the song, it all sounds like it's from 2010, 2012. So this checks out that the song is actually from 2012. Too bad JoJo didn't release it when she was four. It's just funny to me. Shout out to Brit Smith. I don't know how it's legal. If anybody knows and wants to comment on that, how I don't know how it's legal for her to release the song. I guess, hey, if she has the rights to the song, if she wrote the song, she can do with it what she wants. I would have figured that JoJo's team would have reached out and said, can we buy the song? And also, you're never allowed to release your version. Burn it. Kill it with fire. You don't exist, Brit Smith. But no, she's able to just put that song up on Spotify, and it's doing better than JoJo's now. It's very embarrassing um, and hopefully Jojo can realize, hey, I should just be authentically me and open up a Disney themed restaurant in Montecito because that's what Jojo needs to do. That's who she really is. She needs to open up a gay friendly, you know, Disney themed wedding venue. I don't know, something, a bingo hall, something Disney themed where there's a bunch of rainbows and she can be cringy and everybody that goes there is also cringy and gets the memo and is having fun. But she's not going to be a pop star. The internet has told her that, and we made sure of it. You know. Also, she's twenty. She'll 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 be okay. It's just embarrassing. She's going to be thirty one day and look back and go, weird. It was a weird time for old Joe Joe Joe. All right, the gypsy news I wanted to get into. It's funny, okay? I promise. It's not just like me doing her impression. I know you might be sick of Gypsy. I'm not. I think she's a very funny person. Um, Objectively. And and not like... The funniest people are the people that aren't trying to be funny. Yes or yes. Like, isn't that so true? When people are trying to be funny, it's hit or miss. I mean, it's like me. Hit or miss. When somebody is unintentionally funny, I want to follow them around all day. I want them to have a reality show. I want to see everything they're doing. I know very few people like this. I know of one person... Uh, here in Lexington, who is unintentionally funny, and I don't see her often, um, and, but every time I do, I'm just cracking up, because she's not trying to be funny, she just is funny. Uh, that's Gypsy Rose to me. Gypsy Rose is uninten- unintentionally funny. She do- She's not trying, she just, she lives an absurd life. I'm sorry, it got a little bit more absurd. Uh, TMZ reported, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has a blow-up fight with hubby Ryan over his food hoarding. Buckle in, folks. <laughs> Gypsy Rose and Ryan got into a major fight about his food hoarding ways... Okay. They got into a major fight about his food hoarding ways before splitting up, TMZ has learned. Which means Gypsy told TMZ. Sources close to Gypsy, a.k.a. Gypsy... Tell TMZ she wasn't fully aware of Ryan's hoarding issues regarding food before moving in with him after her release from prison. We're told this caused tension for the couple in the two-bedroom apartment they shared. I'm just imagining that Ryan's like, like like his bed, like underneath his bed is just full of Twinkies, uh, sealed Twinkies, unsealed Twinkies, Twinkies that have grown legs and mold, uh, What else is he hoarding? Is it just bags of popcorn, Pringles, Cheez-Its, old cupcakes, jars of his urine? Anything goes over there in the Blanchard household. (laughs) I just, the food hoarding, because for hoarders, 
it's it's a horrible affliction to be a hoard a hoarder. You know, you've got a dead cat underneath a underneath a bucket of shit, and you're like, something smells funky, and it's like it's literally everything, Mary. Uh, but the, but the idea of like food hoarding as if Ryan is like a squirrel, you know, just hiding nuts in his cheeks and running around the house and like hiding them under couch cushions. It's just that's the that's the image I have. And then Gypsy like <laughs> Gypsy looking for the TV remote under the couch cushion and being like, Ryan, why is there a whole roasted ham? <laughs> How did you get a subway foot long into the couch cushions, Ryan? Oh my God, he's a food hoarder. And then it's it's compounded, the funniness is compounded by the fact that they're in a two-bedroom apartment. I can't, you know, it's a two-bedroom apartment. And these are, Ryan's a big dude. It's a small, tight space and there's Twinkies just hiding in spots. Every Twinkie in that house is playing hide-and-seek. All right, back to the TMZ article. Ryan allegedly collects and keeps food items in bulk which Gypsy Rose Blanchard wasn't feeling. Yeah, it's a weird feeling. You don't want to just stumble upon a turkey, you know, or a turkey sandwich. Um, uh, we're told Gypsy was especially bothered by Ryan's fridge as it was filled with a bunch of old food items that needed to be thrown away. And when he wasn't home, that's exactly what Gypsy did. So she's in there. She's rummaging around like a raccoon, a reverse raccoon to her own raccoon husband. She's ma- she, I, I didn't I did not agree to marry a raccoon. This is crazy. Ryan the raccoon. When Ryan discovered the cleared out fridge, he was not happy. And you could tell. You could tell that man would not be happy if all of his food items were missing. All of his cottage cheese had been uh trashed. Our sources say that sparked a huge ar- argument. She found it so scary that he got so worked up about a fridge. <laughs> this is insane. This is what I mean by unintentionally funny. That Gypsy called up, Gypsy got TMZ on the horn. It was like, you're never going to believe this. Ryan, the goddamn raccoon that he is, and I don't mean that in a racial way. I love black people. He's just literally a rabid raccoon. He is, he's hiding Swiss Miss hostess cakes all over the goddamn two bedroom apartment. Publish that. This isn't the only uh, thing the couple has butted heads about. Uh, Gypsy also struggled with Ryan's snoring, which made it difficult for her to sleep. I mean, she's really like just, she is treating TMZ like it's a therapist, a couple's counseling session. And another thing, he snores. Plus, she told the loved ones, Ryan's kind of a human furnace running very hot at night, and she's like sleeping in a cool bed. She said, I want to be sleeping in a cold cot. I'm used to sleeping on a cold cot, like in prison. Now I'm sleeping next to this huge fucking fat man who hoards food all over my house and comes to bed hot as fuck, and not in a sexy way. Why is there steam coming off of my husband at night? And there's a mustard stain on his, on his chin. What's going on? It might seem trivial, but when you add it all up, it was just too many life adjustments for Gypsy. It is a lot, you know, and that's why you don't marry somebody until you live with them. I I firmly believe that. You got to really just see how somebody is at home uh, before you just, I mean, is anybody really doing that? I understand her situation is a lot different. She's coming from prison, just jumping into a two-bedroom apartment with a a, a whale. Um, But yeah, if you can... Live with somebody way before you marry them. I mean, I would live with somebody before I even started dating them. To really commit to dating them, we got to live together for two weeks. I got to see how you live. Do you brush your teeth at night? If I don't tell you to brush your teeth, are you brushing your teeth at night? Are you refilling the Brita? Are you mopping? Are you cleaning your toilet? You know. Oh, good old Gypsy. I hope her, uh, you know, we're following up on it. She is now reconnected with her ex-fiance, Ken Erker. Uh, of course she's dating a man with that name. They claim they're just friends. I don't really care. Good for her. I just think that's so funny. That's so funny that she reached out to TMZ to tell all the hot goss about their relationship and it's just food hoarding and being hot in bed. Poor Ryan. Poor, poor Ryan. 
Reese Witherspoon came out and questioned. Reese Witherspoon questions if careers like hers and Jennifer Aniston's are even possible ever again. No, Reese. The answer is no. And I think we I think I've spoken on this before. There's never going to be the big Hollywood movie stars like there were in the 90s and before and even early 2000s. I mean, from Reese Witherspoon to Jen Aniston to Julia Roberts, and then on the male side, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, uh, you know, well, even John Travolta, uh, Russell Crowe, Brad Pitt, Ed Norton. I mean, I don't think you see them anymore. Now, Reese Witherspoon blames it on streaming, which it could be. You know, there's so much content being put out. Um, there's so many streaming apps. I also attribute it to the internet and how, you know, we are now, uh, we don't care about celebrities like we used to. You know, we go to TikTok and find funny people. We go on s- social media. We find people we want to follow. YouTube. I mean, there's no need to um, care about the personal life of Sandra Bullock anymore. I mean, we, we burned our bridge. Remember when I was talking about how you got to judge somebody by the person they marry? Sandra Bullock is another example of that. Who was I? Oh, I was talking about Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton. Sandra Bullock married Jesse James. Was that his name, Jesse James? The guy who had a bunch of Nazi memorabilia and swastikas all over his house? And Sandra Bullock, after the divorce, was like, it's crazy. I don't even... It's like, you don't marry somebody and not know that about them. Sorry. You know, um, I'm sure they were living together before they got married. So that, I'm like, oh, Sandra, what do you... What? How did you... How do you... Would you marry somebody and, and be shocked? Or are you married to somebody? Are you dating somebody that you would be shocked if, to find out that they have swastika collection? Probably, right? You probably know that about them. So you are who you marry, Sandra. So uh, again, I and then and then after their divorce, she just quickly adopted a black kid. Mm, it's a little weird. I, I, I've always felt weird about Sandra Bullock since then. She's very likable. She's very charismatic. I love her as an actress. I'll separate the art from the artist all day, every day. I'm a big advocate of that. But personal, like her personal life, she's kind of fucked up. Sorry. Um, it's it's wild to do damage control for your career by adopting a black baby. That's wild. The only person who gets passed is Angelina Jolie. She has like she collected like eight of them. So she's hers is earnest. I think she's very she wants those kids. Reese Witherspoon, um, there will never be another Reese Witherspoon. There won't be another big uh actress or actor. Uh it's over. We all have our niche that we're into. You're listening to this podcast. Are you okay? Uh, we all have, I mean, think of how many, there There are people on TikTok or social media in general that have millions of followers. I find their account and I don't know a single thing about what they do, who they are. I don't know who they are at all. And they have millions of followers. And I'm sure that happens for me. People probably look at my TikTok and go, how does this fucking bitch have two and a half million followers? And they know nothing about me. Everybody has such niche followings um, that we don't need this this monolith of of celebrity anymore. It just doesn't exist. Even the Kardashians are kind of flittering out a bit. We're kind of see through the shit now. It's much more fun to to follow a relatable and relevant um, social media influencer or even like a con like Brittany Broski is way more fun to follow than Kim Kardashian. She's real. So no, this, this, this like monolith, uh, this old industry, it's dead. It's done. It's over. You won't see a Julia Roberts. You barely see actors now. I've said it before. Timothy Chalamet is in every fucking movie. He has every role. Timothy Chalamet in Wonka. Timothy Chalamet in Bob Dylan. Timothy Chalamet as Amy Winehouse. I mean, he's doing it all. God, I can't wait to watch that Amy Winehouse, by the way. I cannot wait to watch that Amy Winehouse goddamn movie. It looks fucking abysmal. Uh, if you don't know, go watch the trailer. I, I, I feel like you guys have to know what I'm talking about. I, I feel like a lot of times ago, if you don't know, but like... If you're listening to this podcast, I hope you know what I'm talking about. If not, thanks for still sticking with it and being clueless. It's like, I I feel like sometimes I'm on a phone. This podcast, sometimes I'm describing things. I feel like I'm on the phone with my mom 
where I'm just trying to explain to her things and she's, you know, it's like showing your parents a meme and they're like, I don't get it. Why is, why would the bear do that? I don't, why is the bear talking? Bears don't talk. You're like, oh my God, give me my phone. Fucking forget it. I, I, I tried to send my mom one TikTok once and she was like, I don't know this person. I was like, give me the fuck out of here. I got to go. Love you, mom, but Jesus. The new Amy Winehouse biopic, it looks fucking abysmal. Um, it's an, it's embarrassing. I feel bad for the lead actress, but she accepted the role. She doesn't really sound like Amy Winehouse. She does not look like Amy Winehouse. If you're going to do a biopic about somebody, you have to look like the fucking person. I was able to get into Johnny Cash's biopic, Walk the Line. Joaquin Phoenix, I would have never thought would would have sold that role, but he did it so well. And he played that part. I mean, it was still a little miscast for me, but I, I was able to at least go into it and believe it. Even Elvis, when when Austin Butler, it, you know, became Elvis for two years and still kind of sounds like Elvis and can't get rid of it. You know, I, I it was hard for me to believe, but like I could suspend, you know, belief a bit and get into it. I am not going to do it with this movie. I don't know who this actress is. She does not look like Amy Winehouse. She kind of looks like Carrie Mulligan. Love Carrie Mulligan. Um, You know, you, I don't think she's a big name. I don't think anybody recognizes her by name, most people. So why not just get a no name who looks like Amy Winehouse? You, There has to be someone out there who can pass as Amy Winehouse better than this actress has. And no hate on this actress. I just She does not look like Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse would shit on this movie, for sure. Also, leave the woman alone. Who is this movie for? If you want to learn about Amy Winehouse, watch the Amy documentary. It's very good. It's very sad. I think that it's well done. It really encapsulates who she was as a performer, as a person, what happened to her, who she, where she came from. There's old home vo- videos and old footage of her. I don't know who's making money off of this Amy Winehouse biopic. If it's her scummy parents and like who, I don't know. I don't know that I trust her dad. You know, I think that. Uh, a good parent would have s- at least attempted to save their child's life. I know that they there's only so much you can do, but Jesus fucking Christ. He seems a little cash cow-y. He seems to look at Amy as like a, kind of a cash cow to me. A l- I mean, this is all just my opinion of the matter. Um, It's going to be bad. I'm going to watch it. I'm not going to go to the movie theater and watch it. I don't want to give money to it. I'm going to illegally stream it and I'll watch it. And I'm going to talk about it once I see it, but it, God, it's, it, there's it, nothing about it is compelling. It just looks like a bad, it's like, this was made for Tubi. Why is this being released on, in, in, in a theater near you? There's another one, Chris Farley. He's having a biopic come out soon. I, I'm having good faith that this one will turn out well. And I also think that there, there should be like a time frame for when you do biopics. I think Johnny Cash's biopic came out pretty soon after his death like within five years I would think maybe 10 I think you gotta have like at least two decades before you start jumping into biopics Selena was another one that was well done and it worked but it's rare I think Selena Selena's biopic came out a few years after her death shout out to JLo that was like her best movie ever but like you know Chris Farley that seems like a decent amount of time Hopefully he has the close friends of Chris Farley's have a hand in it. Uh, I have good faith that it'll be good. I hope you'll know once you see the trailer that tells you everything. The Bob Marley movie. I never watched. I saw the trailer and I went, this looks like dog shit. It it just looks really glossed over and, and, and fake. I never watched the uh, Freddie Mercury one. That one seemed, didn't they not mention at all? about him being gay. I heard that like the uh, Queen biopic or Freddie Mercury one, they kind of just glossed over him being a faggot and getting AIDS. Kind of a big plot point. And maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, it just, to me, that seemed another one that was like glossed over and like shiny and pretty and for like consumption of the Midwesterners. This is made for Midwestern moms, you know, not for the gay community. That's what it seemed like to me. I could be very wrong. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, I'm a, uh, obviously a huge comedy fan. I love Chris Farley. And I'm hoping that, you know, people like David Spade can have a hand in it. Um, if they come out and say we have no part in this, then, oh, boy, is it going to be a shit show of a movie? I wouldn't trust it. 
there are a lot of living comedians that can attest to who Chris Farley was and can contribute to this movie and make it a very good script, make it a very good production. So hopefully that's what happens. Adam Sandler, David Spade, you know, Lorne Michaels, for God's sakes. Um, not Norm MacDonald, unfortunately. Um, not O.J. Simpson. He's dead, remember? So we'll see. I have I have high hopes for that, but once I see the trailer, I'll know. Guys, we made it past an hour. We did it. I hope you enjoyed the extra five minutes on this one. We went over a lot. Uh, just a reminder, till next time, don't forget to subscribe so it pops up every week for you, kind of like a boner. Uh, rate the show. Please rate it. It helps me um, with the show, gets the numbers up. Gatekeep the podcast if you want or tell your friends about it. I don't really. I mean, I, I like a good gatekeep. It seems like a. it's our secret. Sounds dirty. I'm your fucking creepy uncle. Leave a review if you'd like. Um, I haven't seen a lot of reviews on this podcast, and that's okay. I'm not hurt. <laughs> I'm just a little offended. Um, if you don't do any of that, you are homophobic. That's I don't make the rules. I just t- relay them. Again, you can support the show and get bonus episodes every week and join our community over there um, on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon, $3, $5, $10, $20 a month. I think I'm worth $20 a month for the uh, content I'm giving over there. Again, I do a live stream queef every day. Nope, every Sunday. Whatever I set up top is the truth. Um, You can find me on social media, um, and uh, that's about it. If you don't know where I am on social media, just give me a goog. Google me. Why are you listening to this now if you don't know who I am, you weird creep? I love you so much. Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Until next time, stay gay. See ya.